Well, good morning and welcome to Zen Fits. I hope this talk fits with you today, gives you a fit. Uh, you know, every, every morning, uh, I want to come up with a different metaphor with which one can get a sense of what this uh, spiritual practice, this spiritual journey, this, this journey of the hero in Joseph Campbell, uh, this personal uh, seeking for your true nature and the meaning of your life. So, and to end suffering. This, this was the whole purpose, the teaching of the Buddha, uh, which the Buddha just means the awakened one, one who is awakened. And everyone has Buddha nature. So everyone has the potential to awaken. And awakening is the cessation of suffering. It doesn't mean you don't catch stuff and you don't, the body doesn't die. It means the cessation of uh, the suffering of uh, consciousness, uh, the suffering uh, that, that uh, cannot heal that just gets kicked down the road. The sense that everything, uh, everything is impermanent and uh, nothing lasts, so why bother? Everything dies, why bother? You know, there's a certain, uh, everything's corrupt. All the government's corrupt, everybody's corrupt, why bother? I uh, just get drunk, have a good time, die young, have a good looking corpse. You know that? Kind of that, you know, so that's a nihilistic attitude. But basically, you know, that's just, that's a step in the path too. So, the image I wanted to, uh, the metaphor I wanted to work with today, uh, I thought of uh, this with uh, uh, Michael Jackson in the song, The Man in the Mirror. And, and the mirror is a, is a very strong metaphor in Zen, in the writings of Zen. And... Uh, and most of the writings in Zen are the M&M &M trail of the Zen masters that go back uh, 2,000, you know, to the, uh, 2,000 years. Uh, so the, um, they're kind of like in the movie, you know, E.T., uh, the, the trail of M&Ms. So these, uh, the, the sayings, the writings of the awakened ones, the Buddhas, are like M&Ms. So we just kind of like follow them. Oh, that's, that's, I, I don't, that's really good. I don't know what it is, but it tastes good. I'll go, oh, there's another one. So there's this kind of like the, our true nature, when activated, begins to follow a path. Uh, you, you like this song, you like this movie, you like this teacher, you like these, this book. Uh, you go to Barnes & Noble and you get a book and you don't know why you picked it, but it was just the book you needed. Or you have these chance encounters uh, on Facebook, uh, anywhere. The whole world is a field of M&Ms for the nature that wants to seek itself. So what is it that's seeking itself, you see? Um, in Christianity, uh, with the mystics of the Middle Ages, uh, God is seeking himself. You know, the God want, in India, the Indian idea of God is that God is asleep and he wants to awaken and surprise himself. Ah, I see myself. <laughs> So he created man. So man was created because man has the evolved consciousness where it can, can know itself. It's called self-reflected, self-reflecting consciousness. Animals don't have that. Um, and, it, and it's a necessary step in the evolution of consciousness in order to make tools. It's the MacGyver principle. Now, MacGyver makes a tool out of anything. All right, well, what's, why does he have that capacity? Um, what is it about the consciousness that can make, make it, it's kind of like alchemy. The, the, alchem, the, the principle of the alchemy of the Middle Ages, which is the science of the Middle Ages, was the search for the Philosopher's Stone. Uh, this, this Philosopher's Stone would turn base metal and lead into gold. So that's a metaphor. 
they weren't really trying to turn lead into gold. They were trying to turn their everyday mind into an awakened mind. They were trying to find the man in the mirror. So, let's take a look at the man in the mirror. And the, uh, there's another image in Zen, too, that is similar to this, but they're always, in the, in, particularly in haiku and in Zen, there's the image of the pool of water. You come upon a pool of water, maybe in the driveway, and the moon is reflected in it. Well, there again, that the, the pool, the, the, drop, the dew drop reflecting the moon, or a pond or a lake, you see, reflecting the moon, uh, a still pond reflecting the moon. Um, is also the, the idea of the mirror. So I got to thinking about this this morning and working it out. And uh, another good parallel image, I'm getting ready uh, tomorrow, I think, tomorrow's Friday, I'm going down to Jacksonville uh, for the weekend to see my sister. She's uh, seven years younger than me. We haven't seen each other for a few years. So I'm going down there and um, but there's two ways to look at this from a paradigm. If you go, to, if using, and I use this all the time because it's such a great modern metaphor that we all understand. Uh, there are, that if, you, if you're going someplace that you have not been before, you're going to need a map. Now there are two kinds of maps available today. There's the flat map, you read it out, and you draw a line, i got to go from here to here, right? So I'm a thing on this map. It's a whole bunch of things, and I'm going to plot a course in time. Um, I'm here, and i got to get there, and I have to move on the map in time. Now, the new way, the new map, you see, is the GPS. Now, if you notice about the GPS, is that you don't move. The map moves. So you're always at the center of the world. Wherever you go on a GPS map, you're at the center. And the world revolves updates around you. If you move, you don't move on the map. The map moves around you. So you're always at the center. But on the flat map, you're, you are a thing on a th like a thing among things among uh, you're not at the center. There is no center on the flat map. There is no center. Now this, go back to the Middle Ages. Now in the Middle Ages, every, the, the vision of the world was the GPS. The earth was at the center of the planetary of the cosmos. And man was at the center of earth. So you had man as an I and the earth as an it, but both were at the center. And so science disrupted this paradigm, broke it apart, smashed it, humpty dumpty, crash on the floor. And this, this crash on the floor is still going on. Uh, during the Middle Ages, the earth was taken out of the center of the cosmos, and along with the earth, God, uh, in the sense that uh, uh, the whole structure was, was earth, God, earth, man at the center. Uh, so that broke apart. Now Earth was just another planet among other things, you see. And suddenly the map became flat. And so evolution took man out as the center. So now man is no longer the number one species. He's just a thing among other things. He's just a species among other species, you see. Flatten that out. So this rational thinking, this self-reflecting mind that came into its own during the Enlightenment took out the center. So that was the, that was the downside. That's throwing the baby out with the bathwater, as they say, you see. So we had great benefits from it. We got to make tools. We got to make a modern civilization. We got to tame nature now, now right here. Um, and it may be uh, 90 degrees outside, but it's a nice 72 here. Isn't that nice? <laughs> But there's a payoff, you see. What's been lost? We're, we're finally coming to realize that something's been lost because our great scientific method is destroying the earth. Something's amiss. Something is missing.
uh, modern man is empty. He's searching for meaning. He's, he's searching, he's falling in love with false idols. Uh, everything is getting mixed up. Uh, we're losing our mind. There's anxiety, stress. And yet we've got all this comfort. We've got, we're living in a king's palace and we're, we're going nuts. <laughs> we've got all this comfort. We've solved most of the major plagues and everything, but we're full of anxiousness and anxiety and stress. You see, what's going on? What's missing? So we have to look. So what is it about the man in the mirror as a um, metaphor? Because you can't get at this by, by analytical, by logic. You can't get at this with prose. You have to go to poetry. You have to go to art uh, to get at the difference between the GPS paradigm and the flat map paradigm. Because the flat map paradigm is the common sense reality that we believe is real. We don't question it. We don't question that if, if I'm a thing, am I really a thing among other things? If, if I'm a thing among other things, who am I? Where is, where is my center? If everybody's a center. You see. So, there's a, there's a, um, one of the, one of the uh, Zen masters, when, upon awakening, and usually in Zen, in the scriptures of Zen, when, a, when someone awakens, awakens or is enlightened, they usually write a poem and, uh, to describe their awakening. And that also the thing about Zen is that uh, it's all about awakening. And when a person awakens, they have to go to a teacher in order to authenticate their awakening. So awakening always comes as a surprise, as a, as a discovery, as, as a trip. You fall in a mud puddle and wake up. Uh, you're sleepwalking and you stump your toe and wake up. So it's always accidental. You can't try to wake up. Waking up is always accidental. But Buddhism is, creates the conditions for awakening. Since you can't wake up by willpower, it creates the conditions in which you awake. And one of the conditions, uh, there's an eightfold path, and the first, con first step in the eightfold path is wise view. Now wise view is what's necessary in order to make all of the meditation and yoga and all of these practices work. And wise view is the view from the GPS instead of the flat map. So if you're on a flat map, well, I didn't bring my marker here, if you're on a flat map, if you want to get to awakening, you're here and you got to go to there. How, many, how, much, how much time will it take me to wake up, you see? Uh, how much, how much effort do I have to put, how much, how much meditation do I have to do in order to get from here to there? So this is on a flat map. But the GPS map says you're already there. Uh, you can plot in, oh, I want to go to Jacksonville, and it will say it will take five hours, five and a half hours to get to Jacksonville. But as you go to Jacksonville, you're already, you're always in the center. You are always home, even though you're going home. So you take your home with you. It's kind of like a hermit crab. You know, you take your, you're always at the center on a GPS map. But, but the common sense reality that we live in, that we look around and say this is what's real, is this. The flat map, which is a living in a three-dimensional space as a thing among other things. And that these things are substantially real. If I were to die, they would all exist. In other words, this, this bowl here, I say this is a bowl, this is a striker, you see, it feels real to me. So this actually exists. If I were to die right now, this would exist. Well, it would exist for you. Uh, but as soon as I see this, 
I also, this, the knower arises of this. So this is the known, but in order for me to focus on it and say this, this is a thing, I have to be a thing that sees it. So it's kind of like this is the thing that sees, and this is the thing seen, and as soon as we see something and name it, a, a, a gong bowl, a Buddha bowl, both arise, the knower and the known. These are, this is the image in the mirror. The mirror sees both of this, but it's absent. The knower is the knower of this and this. Both of these are a reflected image. They rise together out of the mirror. But the mirror is not seen. In our culture, the mirror is asleep. So all we know is this. I'm hit going around hitting up against people. I like you. I don't like you. Bam, bam, bam. A bunch of, it's like bumper cars. <laughs> We're all going around. There's I'm a I'm a I know every I'm I'm the knower and I and I bump into all these known things. She's, but I'm a thing too. Because on this map you see I'm a thing. So I'm a thing that knows things. And you're a thing that knows me as a thing. And so we're all a bunch of things knowing things, you see. And so the Zen master says, I'm the thingness of all things. What does that mean? I'm the thingness of all things. Well, that means that I am both, I am as the, know, as the mirror, the knower, with a capital K, I know the knower, the observer, and the observed. Here's the observer, here's the observed, you see. They rise together the subject and the object. You can't separate them. They rise together out of the mirror that is the knower. But the knower is asleep in our culture. The knower has, is, is the source out of which the observer and the observed rise. Get a sense of that? Get a sense of that? So this mirror image here, the mirror image is, is, is uh, like this, this is the, 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 creates the flat map. But on the GPS, the mirror that knows the image is you as the center of the GPS map, you see. So the knower, that's the mirror, is always the center of the universe that is reflected in it as things. So the awake, the Zen master says, I'm the thingness of all things. This is a, this is what it looks like from Buddha nature, or if you want to use a Christian paradigm, a Christian, a Christ nature. So when Christ says, I'm, before Abraham I am, what he's saying is that I'm the knower or the light of the mirror that is before Abraham, and Abraham is the image. Abraham is the reflected image of the world, which consists of things aware of things, images aware of images. So, and the terror of this self, this is, a, this is the self-reflecting consciousness, you see. Consciousness that reflects itself as the world and believes it is something in the world as a thing. But the knower, the knower, is, can't be aware of itself because the mirror cannot see itself. It can only see images of itself. So everything from this view here, now this is the view of wise view. Wise view is the first step in the, in the Buddhist Eightfold Path, which creates the conditionings for a shift from the flat map world to the GPS world. And remember, the, G, the look from the GPS world, still go, you still go places. You take, well, I want to get a new car. That's my destination. Boom, boom, boom. Now, what do I have to do to get to the new car, you see? Well, you, you go to this bank, you go to this, yada, yada, get a job, yada. You got to do all these things to get there. But at the same time, in the GPS map, you're always in the center. You're always complete. You don't New, having a new car is nice, but you don't need it to be completed. 
You don't need it to end the suffering of being a self-image that's separate from yourself, you see. Nothing will complete you here. On the flat map, you go somewhere and get somewhere to be completed, which is the illusion that that will be the cessation of suffering. We go somewhere, we go to California, we go, get, go to get a vacation, we do all these things in order to relieve the stress of being here. You see. And when we get there, we find there's stress waiting for us. And we can't wait to get back home. Or you say, you know, I'll go on the vacation to eliminate stress, and you have all these stressful things happening. You just create new stress. We go camping to get rid of the stress of the world and create a whole new set of stresses. <laughs> Allergies. So uh, <clears throat> there is a, we're talking about a shift in the center, and the GPS flat map is such a perfect metaphor. But you can't think your way there, you can't get there, because that's going on the flat map. You see the paradox there. You can't get to the GPS center of the world on a flat map. So the whole thing of Zen and Buddhism and awakening, whatever tradition you're in, is seeing that you can't get anywhere. That when I go to Jacksonville, I'm taking me with me. I'll be just like I am. I'll be in the center while I'm going down there. When I get there, I'll be in the center, you see. Uh, so that there is, you're always home. You're always at home. You're always at the center of the universe. And that's where we all want to be. Uh, but it doesn't mean, you see, the big fault is there, oh, I'm the center of the universe and you're not. That's ego. So this shift to the center is not about being the number one like Trump. I'm the center, see, or America is the center of the world and everyone else must bow. Or the, or the godfather, or the number one, I just beat everybody, I got the World Cup, you see. I'm the center. That's not what we're talking about at all. Not that kind of center. That's a center. That's the, that's the flat map center. You get to be the center here when you defeat all the other people who are trying to be the center. But you can only hold that top of the mountain for a while, you see. So Trump's at the top of the mountain holding the center, but it's beginning to fall apart, and he's panicking. Because the idea is that if you're at the center, you're the winner. Well, that's, that's flat map thinking. So GPS thinking is, is that I'm the center of the world, yet at the same time I'm in the world. So I'm of the world and in the world. And isn't that what Jesus said? So G the teachings of Jesus, then, are coming from the GPS map, not from here. You can't understand these teachings from here. So you have to, and all the poets, Walt Whitman, all the mystical poets, the transcendentalists, all of these the Upanishads, all of these mysterious and enigmatic teachings are from the center, from the GPS center, and they cannot be understood from the flat map. So this, this is why the, uh, uh, and so from the flat map, they seem very confusing and, and not logical, because the flat map is based on logic. It's logical to go from here to there, and that's the straight line, and if you go, if you go off, you're wrong. And if you're a moralist, you're, you're morally wrong if you go off. There's only one path, you see. It's logical. You've got to go from here to here. And uh, it's illogical or insane if you go over there and wander around like that. But on the GPS map, it's okay. You're still always going home because you're already home. You're always going home because you never left. Which will flip us back to the Garden of Eden to, co to conclude. We're always in the Garden of Eden. We never left it. We were there as the center of the world. This is the garden. We are, each of us is the center of the garden, just like the computer is the center of the internet. But in our minds, in our cultural hologram, in our cultural projection of the world in which we live, we live in a three-dimensional flat world where we're all just a bunch of things knocking around each other, uh, trying to be, trying to get back to the center trying to restore the center. The center is either in the past or in the future. It's not here. But on the GPS map, it's here. 
because on the GPS map, I'm, we're creating time. We're not in time. On the GPS map, we create time. We create change. We are change. But on the flat map, we're things that change. This is a fundamental shift, you see. And this is the Buddha view, is that things don't change, things are change. There are no nouns. This, though it seems very solid and will last a long time, is changing right now. It's dying right now. As soon as it was forged, it begins to die. All of this is in death in very slow motion. You see. So, uh, so people, well, everything is dying, some very quickly, some very slow. But nevertheless, everything is impermanent. Everything is changed. There are no nouns or things that don't change. And so that includes, that includes when, when the uh, observer and the observed rise. This is me, my ego, and what I see, you see. These rise together and create a flat map or a hologram in which we live, me, there. I think I'm the center, the me, I'm the me. What's in it for me? Everything's for me. Me, 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 you see. But from the mirror of awareness, both have arisen out of that. But the mirror of awareness, you see, is no thing. So the mirror of awareness can say, I am, I'm the thingness of all things. So the mirror of awareness says, I, before Abraham, I am. So the mirror of awareness would say, I am the light. Or I'm the knower of the world, you see. And we, we get into a trap when we say, oh, well, that was just Jesus. He was God. He could say that, but I can't say that. You see, and that's where Buddha shifts. Buddha shifts says, yes, you can. You are Buddha nature, too. You are Christ nature, too. So that knower is asleep in you, and it will awake when you see the futility of the suffering of the flat man. So, let that be the end of our metaphor for today. I uh, hope this, hope this uh, Zen fits. Fits. <laughs> See you tomorrow.